There was a frantic knocking at the door, which woke up the aged physician, Susruta, from his afternoon nap. Who could be there at my door at this time? he asked himself. Must be someone who needs my help desperately. Saying this, Susruta went up to the door, asking, Who is it? I am in great distress, revered physician. A tragedy has befallen me, and I am in great pain and anguish. You are the only person who can help me, was the agonizing reply. When Susruta opened the door, he was in for a shock. At the door stood a strange crying and moaning with blood flowing down from his earlobe. Come in immediately, said Susruta. All will be well, but stop crying and moaning. Have courage. He led the stranger to a neat and clean room, with surgical instruments laid out neatly on a big table. In one corner were clean mattresses, stacked one on top of another. Susruta took out one mattress and spread it out on a wooden bed. He then asked the stranger to sit on it. Susruta then cleaned the stranger's face and ears with the extract of a medicinal plant. He then handed the stranger a mug of wine and instructed him to drink it. This calmed the stranger. After this, Susruta started preparing for the surgery. The first thing he did was, he went into his garden. In the garden there was a large green creeper. He took the largest leaf from the creeper and brought it into the room he had prepared for the operation. Susruta measured the size of the earlobe with it. Then, picking up a knife and forceps from the table, he put them over a flame to sterilize them. He then proceeded to carve out a strip of flesh from the stranger's cheek. The man cried and moaned in pain, but the wine had numbed his senses to some extent. This makes him the father of anesthesia. The next step was to bandage the area from where the flesh had been carved out. It had to be done with utmost care. After bandaging the cut, Susruta cautiously transplanted the carved-out flesh onto the disfigured earlobe. He then molded the transplanted flesh into shape and dusted the area with red sandalwood, powdered licorice, and Indian barberry extract. After this treatment, he sprinkled a little sesame oil on it. Lastly, he covered the flap with honey and butter, and bandaged it with cotton and linen. He then dusted it with the powder of baking clay. After the surgery was complete, Susruta, like an efficient physician, advised his patient on the do's and don'ts. He also prescribed a list of herbs and medicines to be taken, and applied regularly. 
He then advised the patient to come after a period of two weeks to be examined and advised on further course of action. This incident took place almost 26 centuries ago. As we read, we realize that what Susutha did was not very different from what a surgeon would do today. In fact, to recognize Susutha as the father of surgery would not be wrong. He has also been called the first plastic surgeon. This great ancient Indian physician is the main author of the treatise Susutha Samhita. The Susutha Samhita is one of the most important treaties on medicine and addresses all aspects of medicine and surgery. This treatise has medical knowledge that is of relevance even for the modern-day physicians and surgeons. The Kitab Shah Shun al-Hindi, also known as Kitab Isusrud, is actually an Arabic translation of this treatise. The golden age of surgery in ancient India rests largely on the shoulders of Susruta, who lived sometime between 700 and 600 BC. Susruta practiced and propagated the art of surgery at the University of Banaras in the ancient city of Varanasi, located on the banks of River Ganga. Susruta asserted that a physician should invest efforts to prevent diseases as much as creative remedial procedures. An important means of prevention, stated Susruta, is physical exercise and hygienic habits and practices. He also stressed that excessive strenuous exercise can be injurious and can make one more susceptible to disease cautioning against such excess. Regular moderate exercise, suggested Susruta, improves resistance to diseases and physical decay. Susruta was the first in human history to suggest that a student of human surgery should practice on objects resembling the diseased body part or carcasses. He recommended incision studies on bottle gourds, cucumbers, leather bags filled with fluids and bladders of dead animals. The Susruta Samhita mentions various methods of cure and correction, including reconstruction of a nose, rhinoplasty. Many of Susruta's contributions are discussed even today. Some of these include hritshula, heart pain, circulation of body fluids, such as blood, diabetes, obesity, and hypertension. It is observed that the first mention of leprosy is described in Susruta Samhita. This book also discusses kidney stones, and their surgical removal. Susruta gave considerable attention and time to ophthalmic study as conditions such as cataracts were common even during this time. In his treatise, he describes 76 different types of eye diseases, out of which 51 require surgery. Susruta described and used 101 blunt instruments and 20 sharp instruments, which according to him should have an edge so fine that it should divide the hair on the skin. His Samdamsa Yantras are actually the first forms of modern surgical instruments such as spring forceps and direction and dressing forceps. He was the pioneer for naming surgical instruments after birds or animals, for example, hawkbill forceps and scissors, crocodile forceps, crow-faced forceps, and tiger-faced forceps. This system of names is prevalent even today. Even before Joseph Lister put forward the concept of asepsis, Susruta was already aware of it and was practicing it during surgeries. In addition to all these, there are numerous contributions made by Susruta in the field of surgery, such as extraction of foreign bodies, tooth extractions, removal of urinary stones, locating and treating fractures, and performing the caesarean operation. Being a genius and perfectionist in all aspects of surgery, he attached great importance to seemingly unimportant facts, such as scars after healing. He went as far as prescribing ointments, 